today because we're going to do green vegetables, aren't we? Yes, a whole vegetable show. So what are you doing with that branding iron here? <laughs> well, this is a trick my old friend chef, Mac Brignard, taught me. This is to keep the water boiling after your beans go oh, into it, so it's iron. And... Well, we're going to start out with mushrooms. We're going to make a mushroom duxelle. That's very finely chopped mushrooms. And they have to be sauteed with shallots. Yes. And now I think, give an example of how you cut a shallot. You know. First you cut it in half so that you it's know. flat and doesn't roll all over the you place. Know. And with your knife gently, you cut it into thin strip. Then across. Into tiny little dice. How many shallots are we going to have? I think a couple of shallots would be enough. We have about... Uh, Oh, maybe three quarters of a pound of mushroom, something like that, yeah. That's good, you yeah. You're going faster than me, you're trying to show me off. Today well, you have I to talk try. because my voice, is, my voice is going, so you have to do most of the talking. I have a little bit of, uh, of olive oil in there and maybe a little piece of butter. And then we can chop the mushroom, right? And in the old, in the old way, before the invention of the food processor, it would really, at least, it would take me, a home cook, about 20 minutes to do a pound of mushrooms. And you either chop them with your big knife, which took a long time, or you could get a triple demi lune. But it still took about 20 minutes. Right. But with the food processor. Food processor is terrific, but you should cut it in two. Like quarter or pieces. Don't leave them all because if they are round, if they are round, they seem to go around. Uh, if you cut them, if there is some angle, they cut better. So we're going to put that in the food processor. Thank you. See my shallot already. And the idea here is to put the lid on and to put a start, stop, start, stop. So that you don't have a layer on top, which is hard, and a layer in the bottom, which is like a puree. See, that's, that's working right. very nicely. Yeah. You just have to be awfully careful not to turn it into a puree or a mush. Well, here is our shallots. You press your mushroom, right? In some cases, you may want to squeeze the juice out, but you don't do. I don't do it, no. no. I feel that if you cook them long enough, the extra juice that you have is going to evaporate and concentrate the taste. But by, of course, pressing the juice out of it, it goes a bit faster, as you don't have to evaporate it. Also, this is kind of the old-fashioned method. It's also good to have a large skillet. If you have a large skillet, you spread out, and it goes faster. So here, this is squeezing out the juice. Then you save that juice, you can put it in any, in any sauce. Save the juice and you put it back in the duke cell, no? No, no we're okay, not. No. <laughs> as the mushrooms start cooking, the juice comes out of it, as you see, and it stops sizzling. It starts boiling. By the time it starts sizzling again, then it's fine. It's cooked. It ha it's cooked when the pieces separate from yeah. each other, isn't it? Yeah, that's true, too. So now this will take a couple of minutes, and you want to season that with salt, pepper. So we continue cooking it. 
And maybe while this is cooking, we can start on the on the artichokes, right? Let's do that. Good. Okay. You know what? One time I was looking at you doing a demonstration, and I learned how to take an artichoke bottom, to take the leaf out of it, like you show by doing by cutting this around you know. like this. Mm -hmm. I learned that from you, and I always show that to the apprentice when you start, when you don't know how to do an artichoke bottom. That's one of the best way of doing it. Now notice it's very important here to break it and to break pull it. and pull it because down. Because you do see, very slowly now. When you do this, you can look at this. It's like eating artichokes. I mean, the bottom part of it here, where you have the flesh, is still attached to here. If you pull on it, if you pull on it, you have that piece here, and this is what all edible. You get. Yes, all that piece should be in there. So that's a very good way for someone who doesn't know how to do it to keep that all, you know? And then after, you can cut the front part. And if you have a good vegetable peeler, then you can finish it with the vegetable peeler, taking a bit of the green out, like You'll this. You'll have to take practically all the green off. Yes, okay. just light, light green so left, that the like whole, that, it's fine. The whole thing is edible. And then well, we can bring the end you know, with the knife. And then you would rub Ready it with to lemon, cooked. too, wouldn't yes. you? Yes. Well, I would take all of that green off. You want a little more? Yes. Because okay. I think the green is tough. You know what I do, too? I keep the stem and peel the stem. Mm -hmm. That's all edible. This way. And I do artichoke bottom with it. And that's very good. Let me do another one like this with the knife. Oh, yes, we go, very we fast. Go faster with the knife by cutting all around. That's a good way to do, too. And basically, what I have done here is a cone, you know. But you cut it can... far enough so that you haven't lost any of that. What I do also, I cut the end of it and up to the heart, and I even keep those. See, I take the inside because this is very white and tender. I can cook that with the artichoke bottom. And now with the small knife, you trim this around, you know. And That's certainly faster. For that, you really have to have a good knife, a sharp knife, you know. I don't think you'll have to do that if you're going to do any cooking at all. We call that tourné an artichoke, you know. That's a lot faster. Yes. Yeah. So, we have two artichoke bottom, we have one stem. No, I'm going to cook it the old-fashioned way of With a making blanc. a blanc, which is a little lemon juice and flour, and then some water. I'll put it about. That's one full. That's about two tablespoons of flour. It's to come, come to the boil with a little water in it. Cauliflower used to be cooked in a blanc. Your uh, duxel is reduced, it's browning, you can hear it sizzling now. But the so pieces haven't come apart, so it's not ready yet. Do you want to put a little bit of Madeira in the same time? No, but that's not cooked yet, is it? Oh. Close to it. While this is starting, then I'm going to start on spinach. Yeah. Leaf spinach. We have some frozen leaf spinach. And this is an illustration of what you get. What they get, yes. Mostly stem. A lot of stem in the... And the stem really doesn't have any flavor. I think if you're going to use frozen leaf spinach, I'd say don't use any spinach at all, because it well, doesn't have the flavor. Sometime, at some time of the year, it has a large stem like this, and you got to fold the leaf and pull out the stem. See, there's no flavor in that, and that's what you get in the frozen. But when I uh, work in restaurant, usually you will cook the whole spinach with the stem when you do puree of spinach, and when you do leaf spinach. And it spinach, doesn't have a very good flavor because you've got so much stem in it. You think so? Well, in I any think case, so. it has to be... Do, do you cook the stems in puree? For the, for the puree, yes. You have to save money it in the restaurant. <laughs> you have to wash them in a lot of water, leave them up, because believe me, there is a lot of dirt in the bottom. And I'm going to cook spinach with a bit of olive oil in there. And just the spinach, which actually are still wet from watching, 
give me enough moisture. Okay, so here, you want to put a little bit of Madeira? You want to test it? I, I would not think that that was done then, because these pieces are all stuck together. It's because they are shot with the machine, maybe, not shot by hand. I think they are fine. Are we going to put some cream in there or just like this? Well, I think we can put some cream in, but I, I'm going to put a little bit of a Madeira. that in, which gives it a nice... OK, so you have the Madeira. We have the Madeira. And let's put a tiny want... bit of... Let's put a tiny bit of flour in there. So you want a little bit of flour? Pull okay. together. <clears throat> Here we have some... Franklin. OK. So now we have to cook we'll the that. flour a little bit. Yeah. Are we ready for the cream now, you think? If yes. you want any. Well, I think it'd be nice. OK. So, that much. And the flour, of course, will make a kind of uh, white sauce with the cream. And then it'll all stick together nicely from the artichoke. Good. The spinach, I think I'm just going to leave them yes. salt, pepper. Well, let's see some of our cooked artichokes. I'm going to put these. I kept rubbing these with lemon. Yes. I'm going to put these in the blow here and let them cook. Now, we have four artichokes here. So we're going to stop two, at least, with the duxel, which now is totally mm -hmm. cooked. But and delicious. I tasted some. You tasted it, was it huh? Very, very good. Shall we put a little bit of breadcrumb on top of this? Yes. And that goes into the oven. Mm -hmm. Now the other one, I have the spinach here. I put a little bit of Parmesan cheese inside. So I want to see if it's bitter or not. What do you think? It's not very tender. It's not? It tastes, it tastes OK. I think that old-fashioned way of... Of boiling of it. boiling it and squeezing it. You get, I think you get that... it tender, and you don't get that slight bitterness. Mm. But you will do it either way. I mean, in a more modern way, I tend to do it this way with less love of nutrient and... Uh... We don't care about nutrients. We, care we about care about okay. taste. Yes, but when don't you can we... have both together, you know? But it's still a little... It's not very tender, and it still has a slight bitterness to it. I think Doesn't it's it? very tender. It's very tender. <laughs> Maybe you have sharper teeth than I do. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we maybe here I'll mix a little bit of Parmesan cheese and breadcrumb to put on top. And if mm -hmm. it's already warm like this, under the broiler for five minutes should be mm -hmm. enough. Good. Here we are. They are nice and brown. Those look very nice, Jack. Yes. I think that make a nice garnish. How oh, are you? Are they cooked there? I think that's something that would be useful to know. Yes. Then the question, they are nice and white and tender. Yes, yes. and it, it yes. goes through. And then you can also easily get the choke out. And when you get the choke out, you put them in a container back with the cooking liquid, and then you can keep them several days in the refrigerator and use them as receptacle, like a poached egg, other type of thing, whenever you need. It's lovely with a poached egg, yeah, I love it with the poached egg. And yes. a bearnaise sauce. And a bearnaise, yes. That's wonderful. Shall we go on to the to string, the string beans? beans? I have some petit haricot vert, you know, the thin one. And you have some uh, of the bigger, actually, those look more tender, a paler green, you know? Then these are really quite expensive, aren't they? They are a bit more expensive, without any question, yes. And you don't find them in many markets, actually. No. Usually, I know, they used to be cooked in a lot of liquid. I cook them with very little liquid, as you can see here, so that by the time they finish cooking, uh, the liquid is practically evaporated. In fact, I don't even have salt in it. Then I cover it, which we were not supposed to do everything no. against the rule. No, we'll see how they turn out. OK. Well, I'm going to do mine toward the rule. I've got these big, big ones, and I'll just take the little end off like that. Right. That's the longest part of it, is taking the end off. Yeah, that part, you're right. OK. Now, I'm going to have heavily boiling salted water. This is the more water, the better in this system. 
And then I'll, you have to hand me my poker. Oh, yes, that's right. Now, this is a system I learned from my old chef, who used to work on the transatlantic steamers. And here it goes. Right away. You see that? Oh. The idea here is the faster the water goes back to the boil, the greener the beans. And so these just have to cook until they're tender. It's just about four or five minutes. I do some sliced shallots. For mine, I'm going to cook sliced shallots. Well, mine are ready. And you can see how basically have no, no water. So, you know, I remove them and I know it was classic to put them in ice cold water to cool them off. If I have a large quantity, I still do it. But if I don't have too much, then I rather, I think I get more taste well, out of it. Well, the ice water is if, is if you want to do them ahead. That's true. Now yeah. what I want to do here, I want to saute them directly in that pan now. So what I will do, to put a little bit of olive oil there, maybe a dash of butter, and I have some sliced shallots here. Okay, and that's it. I want to saute the shallot maybe 30 seconds to a minute, add my strength being salt and pepper, and that's it. So where are you, okay. where are you at? Well, I want to taste one. And that is to be tender through, but with the slightest... A slight bite, According yes. to Escoffier. Good. Mm -hmm. That's not yeah. done. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Well, mine are greener than yours. Well, yours. mine are a different type of green. Yes. So what, <laughs> what are you putting in there? A little bit of uh, butter? I'm just going to put in a little butter here. And how much butter depends on how you feel about butter, doesn't it? Well, and you don't never put in the salt until you're going to serve them, because the salt takes away the green. So... We have the spring beans with shallots here, haricot vert rather. This is a paler green, yes? You. Mm -hmm. But they were already paler when we started. Yes. It was a different type of spring bean. Well, those look lovely, I think, Jacques. They look Either lovely. way. Both of them. I think. A little lemon would be nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to cut a lemon for that. With the green vegetables, salt and lemon will take away the green color right away, practically. Serve them as soon as possible. I think I'll cut a lemon and cutting mm. it. See, I cut those on the side like this. Mm -hmm. So that by the time it's cut. Oh, that's nice. You have a nice mm. spiral effect, you In know. In the middle. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, maybe a little bit of uh, spring of thyme or something in the middle here. Mm -hmm. It's know. nice we can get fresher herbs now. Yes, it's it? incredible. Well, we have quite a bit more to do on yeah. our vegetables, so let's get at it. We're going to do garden peas. Some, Petit you know, pois. You practically don't see any peas anymore. Why is that? Frozen ones. I never use them at you all. You know, I like the frozen one actually. I mean, fresh is always better. But those frozen ones, they open them like this in a bath of water with salt, and the one high in starch goes to the bottom. The one high in sugar float to the top. When you buy those frozen, you should buy the tender, tiny peas. And those are the small ones in the pad. And those are just, I think they are pretty good. One, you don't have any choice. In the frozen vegetables, probably my favorite. Pick something else, I would say. Right. Okay, I have my wonderful old chef, Max Bignard, and his method for store-bought peas was you first you put some butter, a little butter. Directly in the raw peas, like this? Yeah, and a little, and I'm gonna put in a little tiny bit of sugar, about like that, and some kosher salt and then you rub them together and bruise them. 
With the butter and all? With the butter, with your, with your bare hands. Why would you want to bruise them? Because it's, that's the way. It, that's that's, that's the recipe. That's the recipe. Good. And, it, and it really works. So while you're bruising, your pee will start mine. All right, you start And I have yours. about uh, two, two and a half cup of peas here, and I'm going to put tiny pearl onion. About two dozen of those. I'm going to put. I've got a cup of water. I put some sugar in it, a tiny bit of sugar. I'm stealing some of your salt. That's okay. A tiny bit of salt and pepper. And I'm going to put a little piece of ham in it. And I like really that country type ham. You know, I have, this is a thick slice from the supermarket. I remove the fat here and cut that into oh, about inch pieces, no, not even inch actually, maybe half inch. That's it. I That's kind of very put, good ham too. Put isn't it? Paysan, yes, mm -hmm. country style. And in this here, with a dash of olive oil. No butter. And a dash of butter, yes. I put a dash of butter because what will happen here, we're going to finish cooking it until there is no more water, mm -hmm. and then it will glaze with the butter and a little bit of the sugar. So theoretically, I cover that, and uh, then I cook that for about eight, 10 minutes until it's tender. There's a Thank cover. Thank you very much. All right, so, yours? I finished bruising my piece and I washed my yeah, hands. That's interesting, yes. I mean, the way they look. Mm -hmm. They look queer. And then you then put we water have in just there. enough water, just so that they're covering. And then when they're cooked again, like yours, the water is all evaporated. All evaporated. So yeah. I, can you keep it over high heat with a tight cover? And you'll be amazed at what a nice flavor they have. Well, we're going to find out. Okay. I think these are ready, Chuck. Yep, they look good. I'll get you a bowl for that. I want you to see how to taste it now to be sure you think those are done. Yes. Mmm. They're nice and tender. Mmm. And that really and works awfully well mm. for old peas. Beautiful fresh peas like this. Look at that. And cut them up. And the nice Mine. thing doing it this way, you can do it a little bit ahead. I mean, look at yours. Mine are cooked too. You see, there is those basically no moving. liquid left in mm -hmm. the bottom of that pan. Just a little bit. So, mm -hmm. this is what. Basically, you want, mm. and in a sense, you know, it's pretty similar to what we did. That good? Mm -mm. Both very good. Mm. I think the ones are beautiful, fresh vegetables, carefully cooked. I don't I'll, really need anything else. I love vegetables like this. Rather than often you go to a restaurant and they dip them in uh, in hot water. And they have no flavor. Right. Well, that's it for vegetables today. And happy cooking. And bon appetit. Have a good time.